Hi there, my name is Elena and I am an artist and a designer. Today I'm going to do a tutorial video on how to make your own book. The type that we're doing is called the Sewn on Tapes and it's a super old traditional sort of book that is actually used a lot in movies as props. So it's super cool and I hope you enjoy it. And here's a list of things that you're going to need to do this. So first you want to make your signatures. I'm just using regular eight and a half by 11 white paper. You can use whatever you want. And I'm folding it in half. And then I'm taking this knife, which is called a Fettling knife. It's a cheap knife I got off of Amazon and it's meant for clay and that sort of thing. It's not very sharp, but if you don't want to buy one, you can just use a butter knife. Um, and then I'm just taking the folded sheet of paper and ripping through the edge. You can measure it out and cut it with an X-Acto knife if you want a nice smooth edge, but I kind of like the rough texture myself and I'm too lazy to bother with all that measuring. Anyway, then I fold it in half again and use a bone knife, but you don't have to. A bone folder, whatever. Anyway, then you do it again with a second sheet of paper. And you have the makings of a signature. Open your first paper, put it in the right way, and there you go. A complete signature. Mine has eight pages total, technically 16 front and back. Um, and I'm making seven more, but not showing that because it takes forever. Then you're ready to make your pattern. Take a half a piece of paper and fold it in half and then fold that half in half. And mark on the edge about a centimeter away and then flip it over and mark the same spot on the other side. Then take your ribbon and put it down where you want it a little closer to the middle and mark on either side of that. Then you want to flip the paper over and mark on that side as well. You want it marked in the same spots. Then you'll unfold your, your half and then unfold it again. And I like to draw all the way across the edge because it makes it easier to see. Then you just fold it back the other way, like so, and you have a complete pattern. I'm using this piece of foam because it makes it easier to stab through, but you don't have to if you don't have one and don't want to find one. Then you just take your signature and you insert the pattern and make sure that the spines are aligned because you don't want to get off the spine. I'm using this all that I got in a book binding kit on Amazon. It was really cheap if you want to get it. If you don't, that's fine too. Uh, and then you just stab through the lines where they cross the spine and you want to make sure they're on the spine. There you go though you have a signature. Now do this with all the other ones. You can use seven or however many signatures you want and they should be all basically aligned when you finish. You want to make sure it's basically a straight line and you want to make sure that your ribbon fits. If it doesn't, you've got a problem. But now we're ready to sew. So the first thing we do is get our wax linen thread. I got this in that kit too. And you want to go the length of your book however many signatures you have. So I have seven signatures so I'm going the length of my book seven times. But I'm paranoid and like to have extra thread so I'm going two more times than I need to so a total of nine. Then you get your needle. I'm using a thin one that also came in that kit and thread the needle and you're ready to sew. So you want to come through the outside to the inside on the top hole and when you come through make sure that you leave a fair amount of thread on the outside as a tail so that you can finish off the book when we're done with all the other signatures and everything's also in. So then you just want to go down to the next one and come out through it. Make sure it's snug and then get your ribbon and place it where you want it and go into the hole on the other side. It's a pretty simple process. It's a basic back and forth, up and down sort of thing. You just go into one hole, then out the next hole, and then into one hole, and then out. In, out, in, out. Not too hard. So you want to go from the inside out, and add your other ribbon, and then go inside on the other side of that. And then just come right back out the bottom hole and make sure that it's fairly snug. You want to make sure that it's snug as you're going along 
because it's really hard to tighten it later. So there you go, your first signature is all sewn on. Now you're ready to add your second one. So take your second signature, get it all situated, woohoo. Okay, here we go. Now you're all lined up and you wanna go from the bottom hole of the first one to into the bottom hole of the second one. Make sure it's fairly tight again. Then go out that hole, and this is where it gets a little bit different. When you go to cross over the ribbon, you're not just going to go straight across. You're actually going to go under the thread that's holding down the ribbon on the first one. And it's going to make a really nice X shape. And what it really does is help to secure the signatures to each other so you have this really nice sort of chain that holds it all together at the end. Then you just go back inside the hole on that side of the ribbon and you'll come back out the next hole and do the same thing. Um, and also, again, make sure it's fairly tight. Uh, you want to be careful not to stab through your previous thread or in this case the ribbon as well because the ribbon kept trying to get caught on the needle. But you just go back in and then you come back out the top. Well, and don't get your thread hooked around your ribbon because it's really annoying and gets in your way a lot. So just make sure you keep an eye on that. Anyway, now you're ready to add your last one. It's basically the same thing as your first two signatures, but the difference in your last or your third signature and everyone that follows is that when you cross under the thread, you're not going back to the first one. Make sure you're not going back to the first signature's thread. You want to attach to the signature before your current signature's thread. So for this one, the third one is attaching to the second signature's thread. And the fourth one will attach to the third one, fifth to the fourth, so on and so forth. Which helps to create that really nice strong chain. Anyway, this is the last part that's actually different. You're going to go under the stitch that's holding signatures one and two together. And then come across and go into the fourth signature and you'll do that at the top too every time you add a new signature um, this is called a kettle stitch and it's it's really nice sort of linking stitch it looks nice and it kind of creates another chain across the bottom to make sure that it all stays together and doesn't flop or anything like that and so you, after that all the stitches are the same and you just do that for every single one once you've gotten all your signatures attached, go back around with your thread and needle and basically kettle stitch all across the bottom and the top line of stitches. You can go as few or as many times as you want to. I go a lot because I'm paranoid and I like it to be super secure and I just feel emotionally better. If I go a lot, it probably really doesn't actually make a difference. I just do. And when you're done with that, snip it off. And this is where that tail comes in. You want to make sure that you have enough to go across because you're just going to do the exact same thing you did at the bottom. Just stitch around the previous stitches. Uh, you can tie a knot if you want to, but this is the way I always do it. I also like to put glue on it, which I didn't show because it just makes me feel better emotionally. I'm insecure and I need a lot of reassurance that my book isn't going to fall apart. But there you go. Once you've snipped off the excess, you have your book. You have that really nice sort of X chain pattern on the, on the edge there, on the spine, and you're ready for your cover. To make your cover, put your paper down on your book board and just trace around it. For the top, front side, and bottom side, you want to make sure that there's about an eighth of extra space, an eighth of an inch of extra space, and then you want to just let the back be flush to the book. And then cut it out. You can use a saw or an X-Acto knife, which takes like 100,000 strokes, but it's easier. And yeah, that's how I did it. Then you want to put down your ribbon and trace around your ribbon. And make sure that you label your book board, which side's going to be which and which one's up and down. And also put that on the ribbon because it's easy to lose track of that. And then your ribbons won't be aligned with the board and they won't attach right. Anyway, next you just want to cut 
a couple layers off of those trace spots where the ribbons will be so that the, the uh, cover will be flush and not bumpy. You just cut into a few layers with your X-Acto knife like I'm doing now and just peel it. It takes forever and it's kind of annoying, but it makes it look nice at the end. Once you've done that, get your Yes Paste or white glue. I prefer Yes Paste, but that's up to you. And coat the ribbon and the spot that it's going to be in, and then just fold it over, tap it down, make sure it's all nice and fit. Do that with all four ribbons, and then put something heavy on it and let it dry. Then get your fancy paper that you're going to use for your cover, or fabric if you want to use fabric, and lay your book down on it and mark around where it's going to be. Then get your Yes Paste and white or white glue, and cover that area with glue. Don't use a tiny brush like I did, it's a huge mistake. It takes forever. Once you've gotten it all nice and glued, put your book down, make sure it's secure, make sure your emotions feel good about it, and then put wax paper around your actual paper and close the book and work the bubbles out from under the paper. You want it to look nice and flat when you're done and not bubbly, so you just kind of want to do that. And then, if you're like me, put wax paper on top of the paper so you feel better and put something heavy on it and let it dry. Once it's dry, mark out an area around the book, about an inch or so, more if you want, that you want to fold in. Then trace it out, cut it out, cut off the excess paper so that you just have your book and the one inch or so of paper or fabric around it. Then you want to go into the corners and cut the corners off. You want to make sure that when you do this, you leave a little bit of paper between the edge of the paper and the um, bookboard corners. You want to be able to cover up the corners, so make sure you do that. Then to do the spine, just kind of notch out some spaces around it like you saw me do a second ago. Then do the top and bottom if you want to be sure if you want to actually finish your book. But I'm going to keep cutting forever, apparently, because I just can't help myself. Once you've done that, you're ready to glue it. So take your glue, if you're paranoid like me, put on 5,000 coats, and then put another coat on the book board because it makes you feel better, and use a bigger brush because it takes forever. Fold over the paper and just try to make sure it's nice and neat and tight and tidy. Um, make sure your edges are all clean and that your corners are covered. And just kind of fold that in. Well, after you finish gluing. Anyway, there you go. Now you fold it in. Make sure it's nice and tight. Nice and neat and tidy. Do it again for the top. And then once you finish the one side, do the other side of the bookboard of your cover if you want it to be finished. You don't have to, I guess, but it would not look great. But there you go. Now you have that side. Now you have both sides. So cover your paper with wax paper so that the glue doesn't stick to the paper unless you just want it to. And hey, look, it's starting to look like a book. <laughs> now we're ready to do the spine. So take your X-Acto knife and cut off those little tabs. You don't want a ton. You want to leave some, but you don't want a ton of it. Make sure that they're nice and notched, because I didn't. It took forever. Then just put some glue on it and bend it down. You just, literally just fold it. I fold mine like twice, and you get this nice, neat spine. And then, you sit something heavy on it again and let it dry for like a day. Now you're almost done with your book. You just have that nice inside paper to use. Or to put on the inside to make it look tidy. I'm using this cheap paper I got from Hobby Lobby. I just cut it to be about half a piece of paper, of copy paper. I actually left it a little bit longer because I like to have the extra space. First, I prefer to generally glue the side that's going to be on the bookboard first. Like some sort of idiot, I decided to try and do it on the bookboard. I have no idea why, but that's a mistake, so ignore that and just go straight to gluing the paper. It just is easier. Um, again, use a bigger brush than I did. This like centimeter long brush was not doing it for me, and it took forever. By the time I was getting the glue pretty much done, it was almost dry in the first spots, so just save yourself the headache. Once you've got it all cut out and glued, set it on your paper where it's going to be. Make sure it looks all nice and tidy and you like it where it is. And then 
I like to fold the paper before I glue it because it's more reliable that way and you can make sure it lines up better. So just fold the paper over and then you get to do some more gluing. Aren't you so excited? I put paper underneath the first piece of paper in the book. Glue it all down. Make it nice and tidy again. Again, bigger brush. We're still gluing. Okay, no. Okay, oh, no. Okay, okay, now we're ready. Put your wax paper underneath that half and push them together, make sure they're nice and tidy and lay nice. And then put your wax paper around both sides of that piece of paper, flip it over to the other side, put something heavy on it and let it dry. And now we're pretty much done. We just have that one little thing left to do. We have that excess paper from where we left this front facing paper a little too long in order to make sure it actually covered everything we wanted to. All you gotta do is take an exacto knife and cut that off. And see, now we're done. We have a nice, neat, tidy book. I actually really like the way this one turned out. I think it's pretty and neat and tidy. Even if we did have some gluing problems. But yeah, there you go. A nice custom book for you. Thank you for watching this tutorial video on how to make your own book. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to see more of my work, either crafting, illustration, or graphic design, please check out my website by clicking on the link in the description. Thank you!